Assalamu alaikum. Today's topic will be the gallbladder. Uh, I have uh, made all these other surrounding structures visible because they have a very close relationship with the gallbladder. The anatomy is actually quite small, but functionally, you have to involve the liver, the pancreas, and the duodenum to understand its function fully. First, let's look at the gallbladder alone. And for that, I'll make all these other structures invisible. Now, actually, I didn't mean to do that. What I wanted to do was, let's do it this way. Here we go. Nice. You can see that they are all these canaliculi, interlobar ducts, coming from the liver. This what you're looking at is the intrahepatic biliary tree. There is an extrahepatic portion and an intrahepatic portion. This biliary tree receives the bile from the hepatocytes of the liver. Now keep in mind, it's not gallbladder which produces bile. It only stores it. It releases it when necessary due to the contraction of its musculature and particularly for foods with high fat content for emulsification. But the actual production is from the liver. That's why even if you remove the gallbladder via cholecystectomy, you can st you still have production of bile. So the bile is produced from the hepatocytes, the treble violet canaliculi, into the interlobar ducts. And these ducts both combine to form the right and left hepatic duct. Uh, they're much more better visible here. You can see two ducts here, right and left hepatic combatic ducts. They go alongside the hepatic artery, which is not visible here, and the portal vein. You get the portal triad over here. Zoom in further. But now these two right and left hepatic ducts, they combine. And here you have the common hepatic duct. This common hepatic duct meets with the cystic duct. This is your cystic duct. This is the part connecting the gallbladder with the rest of the biliary tree. So bile produced from the liver actually goes into the gallbladder through a cystic duct. And then when necessary, when the gallbladder wants to secrete the bile, it'll pass through the cystic duct into the main common bile duct. Before going further, now let's look at the gallbladder for a minute. Uh, it really has three parts. Actually, it's a very small structure. You have the fundus portion, which is the largest and roundish part. Here it's a little flat because of it's, um, it's compressed against the liver, the fundus, the body, and the neck. Uh, at the neck, there is an area known as the Hartman's pouch. It's a small bulge, which is not really apparent here. And that is an area which is where you have an increased frequency of gallstones connecting. Other than that, the blood supply to the gallbladder is via the cystic artery. Let's make the cystic artery visible. Yeah. Just to give you an idea of how the blood supply, this artery will be really important later. The artery is not visible. Okay, okay fine. It's not necessary. But just to give you an idea, the right uh, from the celiac trunk down below, there's an artery which sends upwards, the proper hepatic artery and common hepatic artery. This will then divide into a cystic artery, which supplies the gallbladder, and then the hepatic artery is right and left, which goes into the liver. So that is the blood supply. Let's go down and see how this bile actually, where does it go? Now, from a further view, you can see how down below, relation-wise, Above the gallbladder, you have the liver. Below, you have the duodenum. And uh, right beside that is the pancreas. Now, if you see from the back, you may notice that the bile duct passes through the parenchyma of the pancreas. It will then meet at the second part of the duodenum. What happened? Here we go. Uh, this mouse is a bit wonky. Hopefully, it won't do that again. Let's actually, yeah, I think it's because I'm too close. That's why. Let's stick it here. There is nice. Now, here I will exp 
make the pancreas transparent. And you can nicely see the pancreatic ducts. The one which is entering down below is the main pancreatic duct. And notice how it is combining with the common bile duct. These two combine to form your hepatic, hepatopancreatic ampulla also known as the ampulla water and around this you have musculature which is not seen here that musculature is known as the sphincter of OD it contracts to actually push the contents into the second part of the duodenum so you see the duodenum is where you have the absorption of food so when you have fats here this is where the bile will come as well as the pancreatic enzymes together they're all sharing a common root and here they'll dissolve the food content uh, this is also clinically important because you see any sort of stone which becomes lodged within the common bile duct, especially here, will also cause a buildup of the pancreatic uh, juices backside and this can lead to pancreatitis. Gall stones are actually a cause of pancreatitis because of the blockage they cause, indirectly so you can say. Pancreatitis has other causes like infection and alcohol use. In the West, it's, um, it's alcohol which is more common here, we have the in Pakistan, at least, it is the gallstones, from what I've seen in the hospitals. So this is the extrahepatic biliary intrahepatic, and the gallbladder. It's in a nutshell. It's simple, straightforward. Now let's look at uh, the cholecystectomy. Now here you can see the gallbladder filled with gallstones. Now I'm just going to... Uh, Actually, there's something in the animation is just uh, shining red and white. I don't know what's up with that. What I wanted to show you over here is actually the RTL supply. Now, I'm going to zoom in over here. And you can see, that's a bit too close. This was the main common hepatic artery which was coming after the proper hepatic artery. And you can see how it's dividing into a right and left hepatic artery up above. So I have to basically rotate it a bit. Well, you can appreciate it on the back. But here you can also see the right and left hepatic uh, ducts, the bile ones. And notice how through this you have this artery going to the gallbladder. This is your, I'm touching the liver here, it's down below actually. Hold on. Just, here we go. Here you can see the cystic artery. Now, the inferior border of the liver up above the base of the uh, gallbladder and then the uh, cystic duct on the right side let's make it more visible uh, in the next um, image will be more clear you have a triangle known as carrots triangle this is a triangle which you can find the cystic artery the surgeon always has to find this artery before removing the gallbladder uh, because uh, a failure to ligate this artery or improper ligation can cause massive bleeding actually. Let's go to the uh, next one. Now before the surgery begins, uh, commonly nowadays we use laparoscopic surgery. It's much more popular and less invasive. For that basically we make these small uh, openings within the abdomen to pass these ports. Now these ports, they can allow basically multiple structures. For example, the one, the periumbilical port you see here is for the camera. The other ones is for the instruments. And uh, they're placed in basically different positions. Commonly, we have a sub a medial subcostal port, and a lateral subcostal port. So once, and you can see that the abdomen is inflated because we pass a gas to allow the expansion of the abdomen. If we didn't do that, you know, it'd be really difficult to navigate through. Adding a little gas there actually allows things to basically spread apart so you can see them. We don't use oxygen actually because that can absorb into the bloodstream and cause problems. I believe uh, we use uh, helium gas or so there's a different gas actually. Anyway, now in the next image, if you see over here, now the actual uh, procedure involves, you can see how they're using this forceps and they're lifting the gallbladder upwards to expose it. And you can here see nicely how the cystic artery is going alongside the uh, gallbladder. Making it visible allows easy ligation of the artery and as well as the cystic duct. Let's zoom in a bit here. 
Here you can see the calyx strangle I was mentioning. Here is the common bile duct. Here is the cystic duct and gallbladder and the liver. This is your triangle. It's a nice triangle over here. And here is the cystic artery. This is where the ligation happens. Next one you'll see how the ligation is occurring. Here you can see how the gallbladder is glassed. And I'll have to zoom in here to show you how the ligation occurs. Here you can see how the artery is ligated and it's cut in between. Even the cystic duct, obviously you have to remove both things. So a ligature on the artery as well as on the uh, cystic duct. Here they're using a stapler, so another way to ligate. There are multiple ways. In the old days they used the um, strings, sutures, and here we have the stapling. It's much more easier. And once the gallbladder is removed, it is passed through the pores actually because it's quite a uh, soft structure unless it was actually quite massive and multiple gallstones were present. But uh, it's placed sometimes it's placed in a bag and it's passed through the ports. And that was basically your cholecystectomy. A really straightforward procedure, very short. Uh, there is a tendency to abuse this procedure. The guidelines state if the gallstones do not cause any problems, no pain, no fever, irritations, then really you don't need to do cholecystectomy. Here in our setup, unfortunately, well, I think it's actually much more common everywhere. Uh, people just tend, the surgeons tend to do cholecystectomy just at the first sight of a stone. And um, they give reasons because of fear, maybe it will block the pancreatic ampulla, the pancreatitis, which is a worst case scenario.